Let's see how we can find the critical numbers of this function, and let's do the derivative first. So I'm going to use the product rule, even though it's okay that if you do algebra first. Multiply this out and distribute the x to the 4 over 5, and then use the power rule. But I think it will be just easier or more direct if we just use the product rule and also the chain rule and all that stuff. Anyway, I'm going to keep this as the first function, so x to the 4 over 5 power, and here is the second function. To differentiate this, we put the 2 in the front, so we multiply the 2, and then the inside stays, which is x minus 4, and then 2 minus 1, we have the first power. And technically, we will have to use the chain rule, but the derivative of the inside is just 1. Multiply by 1 doesn't matter, so this is okay. And then we add the second function, which is x minus 4 squared, and we multiply by the derivative of the first. Use the power rule, bring the 4 over 5 to the front, and then we have x, and then we are going to minus 1. 4 over 5 minus 1 is the same as 4 over 5 minus 5 over 5, so we get minus 1 over 5. Cool. And now we see we have x minus 4 to the first power and then x minus 4 to the second power, so we can factor out one of them and then let's hope for the best. Hopefully it's not so bad. Here, x minus 4 all the way in the front. For the first part, we will just have 2 times x to the 4 over 5 power left. And then for the second part, we will add well, I'm going to fix this. We have 4 over 5, and then I will also put this down on the bottom, and it will be a positive 1 over 5 power. And here we had x minus 4 squared, but we took 1 out, so right here we will have x minus 4 left, right to the first power right here. Yeah, so this is what we have. Good. Well, we have to find the derivative, where the derivative being equal to 0. So we shall work this out a little bit. So let me just multiply this one by the denominator, which is 5x to the 1 over 5 power. 5x to the 1 over 5 power. It's not so bad, though. But <laughs> anyway, we see here we have the x minus 4. And then for the second part, we will have 5x to the 1 over 5 power on the bottom. And then on the top here, 2 times 5 is 10, and then x to the 4 over 5 times x to the 1 over 5. We add the powers, 4 over 5 plus 1 over 5 is 5 over 5, which is just 1, so x to the first power. And then we can also distribute this, so it becomes, you know, distribute this, we get plus 4x and then minus 16. Alright, so that's what we have. And of course, right here we can simplify it, we can combine this and that. So that's 14x, and then of course the minus 16. And now we're ready. We're ready to just set this to be 0. And then for this case, we have to look at this factor and then make that factor to be 0. So two cases. We want x minus 4 to be 0, and the other case is 14x minus 16 to be 0. Solve this whichever way that you would like. Let me tell you cn. For the first one, x is equal to 4. And then uh, solve this whichever way that you like, 16 divided by 14, reduce it by 2, so we get x being equal to 8 over 7. So we have these two critical numbers. Yep. Now, there is actually one more. We have to look at this right here. Because we have to find out where the derivative is undefined. The derivative doesn't exist. So. Here we have a fraction. We are going to put 5x to the 1 over 5 power. We make it equal to 0 as well. Well, this case is just x is equal to 0. But is this considered a critical number? Yes, because when x is equal to 0, this is actually in the domain of the original function. You can legitimately put 0 back to the original function and it will give you a nice number, which is 0. So this is considered a critical number as well. So ladies and gentlemen, three answers, x is equal to 4, 8 over 7, and also 0. Alright, for more examples like this, check out my playlist.